Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School. We are at Field 6 for Hopkinton Hillers Varsity Softball, airing on HCAM and WACA-TV. It's the Ashland Clockers who stand at 8 and 11 on the season versus the 10 and 5 Hopkinton Hillers. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Connor Donovan is our cameraman. Let's send it to Larry right now for today's weather. It's an absolutely beautiful day. It Larry. is a beautiful day today. It's 76 and sunny, not a cloud in the sky. And WACA and HCAM weather, Doppler says no rain in the forecast. I like it. As Haley Talman set to step to the plate to face Katie Holly, the Hillers pitcher will get you the Ashland lineup in just a moment. Haley Talman, the shortstop, leading things off, and we are ready to go. The Hillers have clinched a playoff spot, but of course right now fighting for seeding. And this is a big TVL matchup here today. Strike one to Haley Talman, the shortstop. Batting second, playing left field, Nicole Abatine. Batting third, playing third base, Elaine Jones. Jess Benedictus, the second baseman hitting cleanup. A swing strike there, 0 and 2. Sydney McMullen, the pitcher, batting fifth. Leah Tallman, the catcher, batting sixth. Allison Caveney, the left fielder, batting seventh. Amy Caffarelli, the first baseman, batting eighth. Wind up and the pitch. That one down low, 1 and 2. Re Rebecca Benedictus, the designated player, batting ninth. And Claire. Sheridan, the right fielder, the odd man out of the lineup. That the odd woman line? out of the lineup, I think. That's you right. You want the defensive alignment? <laughs> sure, let's Maybe do Emma it. Maybe Emma Murphy at third base, Alyssa McIntyre at shortstop, Emily Whalen at second base, Bella Anzi at first base. Wait for this pitch. Ball. Left field, Krista McCluskey, Megan Sullivan patrolling center field, Jordan Chevary in right. Katie Holly on the mound and Jillian Cedia behind the plate. Tom? There it is, the full count pitch, fouled away. The battle continues between Haley Tellman and Katie Holly. Haley Tellman, a junior, batting a 459 this season, a great hitter for the Clockers, 28 for 61 overall, 22 runs scored. And takes strike three, got her looking, she didn't like the call, but that's out number one. And that'll bring up Nicole Abatine, the center fielder. You know what, Tom? In all fairness, I didn't like the call either. I agree with you. I thought it was outside. We get paid to be homers, though. As this is a bunt up the middle, slow roller, picked up by Holly. Throw to first, Emily Whalen covering no problem. So Holly over to the second baseman, Emily Whalen, over at first base, two away. I think Emily Whalen saw bunt, or saw that show bunt, as she immediately went to first base. Looks like they've practiced that play quite a few times. Now we'll bring up Elaine Jones, the freshman. There's a strike. She's hitting a 355 this season. 13 runs scored, 12 driven in. So far, all these Ashland hitters have been up front in the box. That pitch up high. No, I think they want to be aggressive early on. Katie Holly, a junior, 420 ERA, two wins, one loss, six appearances heading to today. As this is driven in the left field, that'll get down for a hit. A two out single for the freshman, Elaine Jones. And that'll bring up Jesty Benedictus. I'm gonna check and see how many times today you mess up that last name. We'll keep a counter. I haven't yet. No? And she's a senior, hitting a 475 on this season. 29 for 61 overall. Takes that one down low. Julia Cedar popping up from her catcher spot. 16 runs scored for Deed Benedictus. 10 driven in. A pitch up high, and there's two De Benedictuses in the lineup. The second baseman, Jess, who's up at the plate right now, and Rebecca, who's the designated player. Hitting ninth in the lineup as this is hit in the air. Over to right center, could be trouble. That'll get down for a hit. Lead runner, Lane Jones, heading over to third. It'll be runners on the corners with two outs. Single for D. Benedictus, and that'll bring up Sidney McMullen, the pitcher. I think De Benedictus. Anything bobbled by Jillian Cedia, she'll take off for second base. Try and get two runs in scoring position without making the third out. Sydney McMullen, a senior, a 351 on the season at the plate. Takes that one down low. 
Ashland hitting well as a team, a 3.18. They're actually hitting better than the Hillers, who are at a 3.17. The Benedictus went hard off, two hard steps towards second base, and returned, hoping to draw a throw from Jillian Cedia. Maybe it'll go wild down the right field line. Wind up and the pitch, upstairs. Two one count. Holly set to deal. Another one upstairs. Three and one. Some early struggles for Katie Holly in the pitcher's circle. The Ashland coach is out of the coach's box, but shh. That's fouled away. And that landed pretty close to the uh the tractor there that the trainer drives around. Well, she's got all the equipment in case she gets beamed. <laughs> That's what we need to get. We need to get one of those. As this is hit in the air over to left field and caught by McCluskey for the third out. Nice job keeping that one in the glove. That'll wrap up the top of the first to the bottom of the inning we go. We are scoreless between Hopkinton and Ashland on WACA-TV and HCAM. Set for the bottom of the first, let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers lineup. Emily Whalen, the second baseman, batting first. Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop, hitting second. Katie Holly, the pitcher, hitting third. Emma Murphy, the third baseman, batting cleanup. Jillian Cedia, the catcher, batting fifth. Bella Ansi, the first baseman, batting sixth. Megan Sullivan, the center fielder, batting seventh. Jordan Chevery, the right fielder, hitting eighth. And Kristen McCluskey, the left fielder, hitting ninth for the Hopkinton Hillers. Larry. Why don't you tell us about that Ashland defense? Yes, Tom. At third base is a real ball player's name, Emily Jones, or Elaine Jones, excuse me, Adam's sister. Uh, Holly uh, Tallman at short, Jess De Benedictus at second base, Amy Caffarelli at first, Allison Cavani in left, Nicole Abatine, and Claire Sinclair in right field, or Claire Sheridan in right field. Thank you, Tom. Leah Tallman catching. Sydney McMullen. There you go. There's the Ashland Clockers defense as Emily Whalen set to step in to face Sydney McMullen for the Ashland Clockers. McMullen deals. There's a strike. That's her stock and trade. Emily Whalen always likes to run up in the box and try to bunt her way on or slap hit it. The 0-1 outside. Sydney McMullen, a 5.49 ERA, one win, two losses, is her 20th appearance of the season. As Whalen gets a piece of this one, slow roller up the first baseline and foul. One and two. I just noticed, Tom, all the infielders, there's enough masks on the infielders to have a Halloween party. Everybody's got a mask on. Better safe than sorry. Well. <laughs> well, they know how hard these uh, Hillers can hit the ball. Maybe that's part of the reason they. Oh, you know, I never thought of that. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> two and two on Emily Whalen. Emily Whalen, a junior, hitting a 444 this season. And she is dangerous every time she gets on base, and she will get on base here as she drives that one into left field. Around first she goes, heading over to second. The throw in is going to be caught by the second baseman, but not before Emily Whalen is safe with a stand-up double. That's a timing swing right there, but that's an example of a slap hit. That'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre, who's a sophomore hitting a 345 this season. She had a hit against Kelly Nelson, the game against Norton, one of the four hits the Hillers got. Gets a piece of that one, but it's foul. So runner on second for the Hillers, no outs. Emily Whalen will go on the slightest bobble from the catcher. Gets a piece of this one down the third baseline, fielded by the third baseman, throw to first for one, but Emily Whalen advancing to third, no problem. Fielder's choice. So Alyssa McIntyre thrown out. 
but Whalen able to get over to third, and that'll bring up Katie Holly. That's a five to three on the out. That one outside, one and oh. She's got the most fashionable helmet in all the TVO. The Tony the, Tony the Tiger stripes. Larry, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you officially score that one a sacrifice, but. I thought it would be a field of choice. Pretty, I don't think so. Okay, well, we'll agree to disagree. We'll consult with the uh, powers that be. We'll have to consult <laughs> with the uh, the officials. As that one is up high, 3-0. and Katie Holly, a junior, hitting a 429 coming into this game. She's a real good overall player. Certainly is. She can do it all. Pitch, hit, field. She's going to draw the walk here. Two on, one out. It'll bring up Emma Murphy, the third baseman. Emma Murphy could also be trouble at the plate for Ashland. 316 on the season. She she was another uh, young lady that got a hit against Kelly Nelson last game out, and when she dumps she, one in the left field. She gets a hit here. Emily Whalen around to score as Katie Holly is going to stop at third, an RBI single for Emma Murphy. How do you do? one nothing Hillers. Runners on the corners, one out. Jillian Cedia, the catcher to the plate. And she has all kinds of power in her sophomore season, a 353 batting average. Three homers to her credit. Left fielder and center fielder playing very deep. It's a piece of this down the third baseline. That's a fair ball. Here comes Katie Holly around to score. She will. Emma Murphy now heading over to third. And Jillian Cedia is going to be safe at second on the throw in. An RBI base hit for Jillian Cedia. Coach Soderberg was very conservative there. I thought he was going to wave Emma Murphy in, but he put the brakes on her. I'll bring up Bella Ansi. Bella Ansi hitting a 438 in her junior year. Having a very nice season so far. We're going to have a pinch runner here for the Hillers. Heather Sivo's going to come out and pinch run for Jillian Cedia. speed on the base paths for the Hillers. I'll tell you, Larry, Jillian Cedia, she's going to be a fun player to watch over the next few years. Oh, no kidding. Great behind the plate, great with the bat. She might draw a crowd of uh, college recruiters, I have a feeling. I think she will. That one outside, one and one. The catching position is such in demand. The high school coach, first thing he does during tryout is say, who is going to be my catcher? Gets a piece of this one right back to the pitcher. She looks over at third, throws the first. And they do get the out at first and nearly an out at second. And now the run trying to score, she will. And it's three nothing Hillers. Emma Murphy coming around on the throw to second. A little razzle dazzle on the base pass. Yeah, Heather Sivo playing some games over there at second base. And it is a sacrifice. Five to three ground out for Bella Ansi. How are you gonna score that? I just said how I'm going to score it. Well, you know, it was a throw, <laughs> throw over this sacrifice ground out. That's how I'm scoring that one. Well, you got to take into consideration the throw to try and get Sebo at second base and then the throw to get Murphy. We'll keep it easy. All That's right. Megan Sullivan at the plate now. That pitch up high, 2-0. and oh. Megan Sullivan, a sophomore, 143 this season. 3 nothing Hillers, two outs in the inning. I went up high, 3-0. and oh. Sydney McMullen feeling the wrath of the Hillers lineup. There's a strike, three and one. That was a good call. This can't be helping her ERA with a three spot in the first inning. Swinging strike, nice pitch, full count. Gets a piece of this one, hit in the air over to shallow center field. That is going to drop down for a hit. Here comes Heather Sivo around to score the fourth Hiller's run. It's an RBI single for Megan Sullivan. Had a girl. Put it where they weren't. 4 nothing Hiller's. Now Jordan Chevery, the right fielder, will step in. One of my favorites, Tom. She's hitting a 263 in her sophomore season. Takes a strike on the inner corner, 0-1. And, and you pronounced her last name correctly today. Usually I uh, 
Yeah. On the lineup, it looks like it's so easy. It looks a little different. <laughs> that one outside, one and one. You see the runner has got an orange bag and a white bag. Fouled away, one and two. In terms of first base. The orange bag is for the runner when she's coming down the line. And the white bag is for the fielder. So in a running position, she'll just straddle that white bag and push off. Breaking pitch, got her looking for strike three, and that'll wrap up the first, but not before the Hellers plate four runs. It's a 4 nothing Hopkinton lead as we head to the top of the second on WACA-TV and HCAM. Top of the second inning, six, seven, and eight do up for the Ashland Clockers. Leah Tallman, the catcher, Allison Caveney, the left fielder, and Amy Caffarelli, the first baseman, to face Katie Holly. It was a two-hit top of the first for Ashland. No runs scored. A 4-0 lead for the Hillers. You know what I want to know, Tom? And you're in the know. When the girls come uh, after they've thrown their last warm-up pitch and they meet in the middle in the pitcher circle, what do they talk about? Uh, I think they talk about game strategy. Hmm. That would be my guess. Well, there's nobody on. <laughs> okay, do they just say, all right, let's throw strikes out there for a little, little while? As this is hit in the air and handled by Emma Murphy coming in from third base, one away. That'll bring up Allison Caveney, the left fielder. Emma Murphy has been rock solid over at third base all season for the Hillers. Caveney fouls that one away. Can see do you make the catch? No, just out of her reach. 0 and 1. Caveney is. In her junior year, 264 for Ashland. Katie Holly deals down low. One and one. Holly delivers, fouled away up the third base side, one and two. The Ashland. Clockers led by head coach Steve Abateen. Hillers led by head coach Scott Soderberg. The one two down low. That's what I like to see from the catcher. She's blocking the ball even though there's nobody on base. That's good practice for her. Wind up and the pitch down low. I didn't see that last year, so she must have worked on it over the winter. Well, she has certainly improved coming into this season. Not that she was bad last year. As this is hit up the middle, Emily Whalen handles it. Throw to first, no problem. Four to three on the out. Oh, that ball had some backspin on it. That was a great play by Emily Whalen. Emily Whalen throws to first. She zooms that ball right in there. She certainly does. She certainly does. I'll bring up Amy Caffarelli, a senior, hitting a 111 on the season. Takes that one low and inside, 1-0. and oh. Holly delivers, upstairs. Here's a little trivia for you. Why do they call devil dogs devil dogs? Because it... <laughs> I found because out today, I found out today, so it's, I'm tricky. Because, because they're very bad for you, so they seem like they're from that place down below. Well, I had a couple for lunch. But they're shaped in the, uh, they're shaped like a dog bone. Ah. The 3 0, and that'll be a walk. So you never know what you uh, will hear on a WACA TV and HCAM broadcast. That's true. And I'm not promoting the product, I'm just trying to say. A trivia, trivia question. Rebecca DeBenedictus steps up, a freshman up the middle, grabbed by Katie Holly, throw to first, no problem. That's all they need. That'll be the third out of the top of the second. To the bottom of the second we go. The Hillers leading Ashland four to nothing on WACA TV and HCAM. Bottom of the second inning, due up for the Hillers, nine one and two. Kristen McCluskey, the left fielder. Emily Whalen, the second baseman. Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop. A 4-0 lead for Hopkinton as we head into the bottom of the second. 
Sydney McMullen hoping for some better luck in the pitcher's circle this half inning. McMullen deals up high. Good velocity on that pitch though. I think it's the hardest ball, ball she's thrown yet. The 1-0, down low, 2-0. Kristen McCluskey, a freshman, hitting a 346 for the Hillers. She is a player to look out for. Gets a piece of this one up the third base side. That's going to trickle into left field, and that'll be a single for McCluskey to start off the bottom of the second. This isn't her first rodeo. She went to the opposite way and lined that between the shortstop and third baseman. Nice piece of hitting. We'll bring up Emily Whalen, who had a double her last time up and scored a run. Thought about bunt there, but holds the bat. She thinks about one. bunting every pitch, or she, I she think threatens to do it. She certainly has, I'm sure she has more bunt attempts than swings. Uh, that one's fouled away. That would be absolutely true. One and one. Most of the time she's able to reach she had a nice slash hit the last time. There she goes again. And that was a small swing. Throw to second, and everybody's safe. Good speed by McCluskey. A single for Whalen. There would have been no play on Emily Whalen in any event had she not gone to second. I'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre. She's a threat to go deep. She certainly is. And this is up the middle, grabbed by the shortstop, throw to first, they get one, but both the runners on advance. McCluskey to third, Whalen to second. So one to three on the out, that'll bring up Katie Holly, the pitcher. And she will foul that one away, all kinds of power in that swing. That's a bye-bye ball, nobody's getting that. How about this four number, Emily Whalen with a 474 on base percentage. What's she slugging? And that one is just outside, a 555. Those are some lofty numbers. Certainly is. Down low, that's gonna get by the catcher, but the runners are gonna stay put. Short backstop, didn't wanna take a chance in the running in and went out. Katie Holly walked and scored a run last inning. Coming into this game, a 429 batting average. Four doubles to her credit this season. She doesn't have a hole in her game. She can hit, she can run, she can field, she can pitch. Fouled away there, two and two. Lefty awaits the pitch. Just outside, full count. First base is open. Two on, one out. And this is a foul ball. Count remains full. Looks like the Hopkins girls are having a lot of fun today. They're a little chirpy on the bench, unlike last game where it was quiet, like the inside of a church before services. <laughs> and Katie Holly will draw the walk. That'll load up the bases. Well, when you strike out 19 times. Uh, yeah, it's a tough day. Yeah, it's a tough day. The office. I'd say just about any day you face Kelly Nelson's a tough day. Because Emma Murphy will step in. And by the way, uh, Kelly Nelson broke the state record for most strikeouts in a high school career. As this one's up the middle, in the center field it goes, one run in to score. Here comes Emily Whalen, a throw to the plate is not in time. Two Hillers run score as Emma Murphy advances over to second base. A two RBI single with an advancement on the throw. Hey, one out. So Katie Holly went, hey, no. Katie Holly went to second base, third base. So runners on second and third still 
Only one out in the inning. It's a 6 nothing Hiller's lead. Look who's coming to the plate. Riddle me this. What is she slugging? She's got to be one of the highest slugging averages in the TBL. Jillian Cedia. She got an RBI single her last time up. 794 slugging percentage. And she will put this one in the air over to shallow right field. And it is caught. Runner from third is going to tag up and now go back. And that is the smart play there. That throw in from... Claire Sheridan was a good throw in, so a good move by Katie Holly retreating the third base. It's a nice invention, those things uh, that you wear in your eyes. This is a high sky today. I thought she was going to lose it. Bella Ansi at the plate, gets a piece of this up the third base side. That's a fair ball. Throw to first in time. Five to three on the out, but the Hillers plate two more runs. It's a 6 0 Hopkinton lead as we head to the third inning on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the third inning, due up for Ashland, one, two, and three. Haley Tallman, Nicole Abatine, and Elaine Jones to face Katie Holly. Katie Holly has given up two hits, no runs so far. One strikeout to her credit. Puts that one up high, one and zero. Oh. That was very nice of Alex Reynolds last year's try, uh, last year's Tri Valley League MVP. Come by and say hello to the crew. Certainly was. A lot of fun watching him the last couple of seasons. There's a strike, one and one. You mentioned uh, he had the opportunity to catch Craig Kimbrell and Stephen Wright. So that one's fouled away, one and two. Yeah, I asked him about his curveball, Kimbrell's, because it's a real dirty curveball. He did spike one in the dirt, and he says, I just picked it. He says, I don't know how I did it, but. Picked it nonetheless. Line up and the pitch. Upstairs, two and two. Haley Tallman struck out her last time up. Line up and the pitch. That one is way up there, full count. Haley Tallman, good average on the season, 459 overall. 22 runs scored, 13 driven in for the junior. Gets a piece of this one over to center field, and it's caught. Megan Sullivan arranging way to her right to make the catch. Some good fielding there by Megan Sullivan. She got a good jump on that ball. Other th otherwise, that was going to the wall. I'll bring up Nicole Abatine, the clockers center fielder. There's a strike. She might be a relation to the Ashland coach, or one of the coaches. I believe that is the case, 0-2. Oh In order to prepare for the games, I stay up most of the night. We know that, certainly. We, it, it pays off, it pays off. The 0-2, this is hit in the air, should be routine. Battling the sun, making the catch. Emily Whalen, two away. She's money. She's a ball magnet, that Emily Whalen. Certainly is. She does not make many mistakes at all in the field. Or on the base paths. Or anywhere, as Elaine Jones steps in. There's a strike. Lane Jones singled her last time up in the first inning. I think all players should be Joneses. It just sounds like a baseball name, as I mentioned earlier. That one down low, one and one. Gets a piece of this up the middle, gloved at short, throw to first, and that is into the fence in front of us. What'd you duck for? <laughs> <laughs> not, not sure if that was going over or not. Uh, I saw it all the way. I didn't say heads up to you, but. So Lane Jones reaches on the error. She advances the second. As that'll bring up Justy Benedictus. Kept announcing, though. I've learned how to do Cameraman that. Cameraman almost dropped his camera. <laughs> you got to duck and keep talking. That one inside, 1-0. and Yeah, Alyssa just missed that. She could have turned her hip a little bit more facing first base, and the throw would have been right on the money. 
2 and out. A rare error. Yeah, you don't get put in the shortstop position just for the heck of it. You got to have some good glove work. That one outside, 3 and 0. Oh. There's a strike, three and one. Three one pitch. It's a piece of this foul. Full count. Emily Whalen almost tracked that one down. The Ashley and coach was trying to kind of contort her body to make that ball go fair, but. I guess it doesn't work that way in the law of physics. Up the left side, gloved by the third baseman, throw to first, it's dropped, and everybody's safe. And now the runner from third gonna try to score, and she will. It's a six to one game. Another error allows Jesse Benedictus to reach, and Elaine Jones to score. And that'll bring up Sydney McMullen, an error, a very rare one on Emma Murphy. Oh no, I'd gonna have to give that to uh, Bella Anzia. Actually, Sorry. you know what? I think you're right. It was on Bella. Nothing against throw. Bella. I like her. She's a good, good player. Throw was a little off, but it was right in the in the. She was able to reach to it, so fell out of the gloves. So Would you it feel, you feel better if I didn't give an error at all? I give <laughs> Ashley Empire a base hit. Yeah, we'll give the error. All right. Sydney McMullen steps in. And this one is hit up in the air at a play foul, 0-1. So a 6-1 to one lead for the Hillers. A pair of errors have extended this inning for the Clockers, and given this Ashland offense some momentum. All you need is a little mow and the wheels can come off the bus. That's right. I think we're waiting for a softball here. There we go. Brand new softball. They're actually not soft, Tom. They're very, very hard. That is true. Why they call it a softball, I don't know, <laughs> but we'll have to ask our cameraman to do some research. It's a sport of irony. <laughs> VO1. High and inside, one and one. Sydney McMullen for Ashland, a senior hitting a 351 heading into this game. Gets a piece of this one over to center field and caught by Megan Sullivan. And that is the third out of the top of the third. But the Clockers do play to run. It's six to one as we head to the bottom of the third on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the third inning, Megan Sullivan at the plate. For the Hillers, first pitch down low, one and zero. Oh. Seven, eight, and nine do up. Swinging strike there. One and one, a six to one lead for the Hillers. Wind up in the pitch. That one just outside. Megan thought about that one, but she ended the top half of that inning with a great, great catch. Up high. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. Two and two. Hey, Megan, hey, two. The two-two pitch. And she'll draw the walk. And actually, I was right the first time. The scoreboard uh, said two and two, so I thought I got the first pitch wrong. But that was the three-one pitch, and she draws the walk. And that'll bring up Jordan Chevery. So lead hitter on for the Hillers. There's a strike. You know, softball umpires don't have the liberty to make their own strike call. They have to bring their arm up at a 90 degree angle. Hit in the air and that'll get down into right field. That'll be a single for Chevery. Megan Sullivan pushes up to second. Two on, no outs for the Hillers as Kristen McCluskey, the left fielder, will step in. Mullen set to deal outside. Hey, 
A base hit here in the gap would score two runners. Two and oh on McCluskey who singled and scored a run in the second inning. And that was on a two RBI hit by Emma Murphy. A pitch just outside, three and oh. Well, Sydney McMullen didn't like that call. She thinks the umpire is a little tight. Down low and that's a four pitch walk to Kristen McCluskey. Base is juiced for the Hillers. And look who's coming to the plate, Emily Whalen. Oh, that's a little trouble. Two McMullen is waving her outfielders in. Emily Whalen two for two on the day. She's also scored two runs. Ashland is gonna try and cut the runner off at the plate. The infield is playing in all the way around. Oh, and one. Upstairs, one and one. I think Emily's well aware of where the defense is playing. So she wants to slap one right through. The one, one pitch. And lines this one up the middle. That'll get through for a hit. One run in, and that's all that'll score. But the bases remain loaded for the Hillers. An RBI single for Emily Whalen. And she is three for three today. The well, runners are still going to play in. I don't bring playing up. station to station baseball. Sorry, Tom, I didn't mean to step on you. No problem. As Alyssa McIntyre steps in. Outside. So over at third base, you got Jordan Chevery at second, Kristen McCluskey, and at first, Emily Whalen. There's a strike, one and one. A seven to one lead for the Hillers. And that is fouled away, oh, and, uh, one and two. Mullen set the deal. And this is hit in the air, and that'll get down for a hit. Here comes Jordan Chevery around to score, an RBI single for Alyssa McIntyre, and the bases remain loaded. It wasn't a blast, but it was a no woman's land. So nobody was going to get to that one with the infield playing in. And that pitch was just left hanging in the zone. Almost double clutched while waiting for the pitch to come in. Katie Holly takes one outside. 1 and 0. Oh. I think the outfielders are playing a little shallow here. That pitch up high, 2 and 0. Oh. Holly has walked twice today and scored a run. She hits one to the fence. Alyssa McIntyre will be touching home plate. There's a strike. An 8-1 lead for the Hillers as they continue to rally in this bottom of the third. Still no outs. I think that was a little off-speed sp off pitch by McMullen. Gets a piece of this one, and it is out of play foul. Two and two. Line up and the pitch. Outside, full count. Good eye by Katie. Katie Holly with a chance to draw her third walk of the day. She's not begging for a walk. She's going to swing. And she'll get the walk anyway, and Next that'll time score she'll a run. get up and swing. <laughs> Coming around to score is Kristen McCluskey. It's a 9 1 Hiller's lead. A nice RBI by Katie Holly. Absolutely. Now bring up Emma Murphy, the third baseman, who's two for two today. She already has three RBIs to her credit. Racking up the numbers. Up the third base side, past the reach of the third baseman, but foul. That was close. Very close. I thought I saw chalk. Well, Emma Murphy saw it, didn't even move towards first base, so she knew it was foul. That call, that foul ball call, is to the home plate umpire until it goes over the bag and the base umpire gets the call. That one down low, one and one. Bases loaded for the Hillers, three runs in, no outs. A 9-1 lead. 
As Emma Murphy gets a piece of this one over to center field, that'll get down. Here comes Emily Whalen around to score an RBI single. It's 10-1 to one Hillers. Why don't you remind the viewers, Tom, as to scores, innings. Not that's going to happen. Hope for Ashland get a little comeback here, make it a little interesting. I'll bring up Jillian Cedia. Ooh, this is an interesting hitter. There's a strike. Well, rally here in this bottom of the third, and the Hillers there not really uh, forcing anything around. You can't blame them. They are just rallying all the way through the lineup. And the bases are remain loaded with no outs, and already four runs in in this inning. 10-1 lead. Cedia gets a piece of this one in the left field. It goes one run is in to score an RBI single for Jillian Cedia. Well, I think Coach Soderberg made the right call there because if he had sent the runner, that would be like running up the score like Norton did the last game. Yeah. Like sending a runner, being it, up like nine runs and sending a runner to steal. And, and there's really no reason to take the risk because it would be a close play at home if you send that second runner. Why take the risk if you're having this much of a rally? Young Sivo girl is now pinch running for Julia Cedia. And there's a meeting on the mound. Bella Ansi set to step in for the Hillers as Coach Abatine going to have a discussion with Sidney McMullen. I can hear him. He's saying, just throw strikes. Certainly a tough inning for the Ashland Clockers as the Hillers just continuing to rally through this bottom of the third. Five runs are in. The bases remain loaded. Still no outs. And the Hillers have batted around. It's a terrible situation. I came 100 miles for this game, and I'd like to see it play a full seven. Well, Ansi set to step into the left-hand batter's box. She had a sacrifice in the first inning, which drove in a run. There's a strike, and then she grounded out in the second. The 0-1, hey, up she, high. She thought about it. Megan Sullivan due up next for the Hillers. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Connor Donovan on camera as this is hit in the air, foul territory out of play. One and two. An 11 to one Hillers lead over the Ashland Clockers. I would like to thank all our viewers watching on either HCAM in Hopkinton or WACA TV in Ashland. McMullen deals outside. And both networks will be bringing you another season of Ashland Legion baseball this summer. Believe it or not, the season starts in just a couple weeks. That one down low. One of the Hopkinton Hillers from last year on the Legion team had some Tommy John surgery just the other day, and he will be done for the year. Bella Ansi gets a piece of this one, and it's caught by the shortstop. The infield fly rule is called. Absolutely. One away. And that'll bring up Megan Sullivan. Megan Sullivan walked to start the inning. And since that, five more Hillers runs have scored. That one outside, 1-0. One oh. Bases loaded for the Hillers, now with one out. Inside, 2-0. Two-zero pitch from McMullen, through, and that's a strike. Bases full of Hillers. Yeah, we finally got some cheering from the Ashland crowd. Fouled away, two and two. They asked before the game, right, Tom, if they could cheer. That's right. He said, absolutely, cheer as loud as you want. It is encouraged from all fans here at Field Six. The two-two. Outside, full count. 
Well, as soon as she releases the ball, the runners will be off. Oh, they got a freeze on a line drive. So sorry about that. Swinging strike, two away. I'll bring up Jordan Chevery, who singled earlier in the inning. Such a nice day. I'm surprised it's such a small crowd. Bases loaded now with two outs. And this is hit in the air, foul out of play, 0-1. So it was Kelly Nelson's uh, strikeouts as she came out the day, uh, make her an all-time strikeout leader in the state? Yep, she grabbed the all-time strikeout record in the state. And it was Shannon Smith from Milford who had the record previously as this is hit in the air and caught by the center fielder. For the third out, the Hillers played five runs in the bottom of the third. It's an 11-1 Hopkinton lead as we head to the top of the fourth on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the fourth inning, an 11-1 Hopkinton lead over the Ashland Clockers. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Ashland Clockers softball on either HCAM TV in Hopkinton or WACA TV in Ashland as Leah Tallman, the catcher, steps in to face Katie Holly as this is hit in the air and caught by the first baseman. Good snag by Bella Anson. What a great play that was. I went over to one of the Ashland fans and implored her to start cheering. I think a relative, I said we were going to pan over there and get a shot. One pitch, one out as Allison Caveney takes a strike. Family member says she always wanted to be in Hollywood, so we'll see what our cameraman could do with that. The 0-1 down low. Skipped out of the way. Should have just took that one right off the leg. Oh, take one for the team. Take one for the team. <laughs> Get on base any way you can. That's right. It's the name of the game. The 1-1, one, one. and that is foul. Did one off her foot. Lots of fans sporting sunglasses today, Tom. That includes yourself. That's right. Hit in the air over to right field. That'll get down for a base hit. Good piece of hitting by Allison Caveney, the left fielder. One out single. I'll bring up Amy Caffarelli, the first baseman. Line up and the pitch. There's right down Broadway. Yep. One on, one out. Up the middle, that's going to get through into center field, and it's 2 on with one out. Just one off the edge of Alyssa McIntyre's glove. Right to the center fielder. I'll bring up Rebecca De Benedictus, but we might be getting a pinch runner here. On the previous hit, I thought the right fielder Actually, was going to come up throwing. We're going to get a pinch hitter here. Coming in the game to hit for the Ashland Clockers. It is going to be Stephanie Mascaratolo. Steph Mascaratolo steps in. Hitting for De Benedictus. And that one is going to be a ball. Both runners advance. I thought that actually hit her. Uh, just missed. Not. But Jillian Cedia has that cannon for an arm. She thought about it. Both runners did advance. Caveney to third, Caffarelli to second. One out, two on. Upstairs. For two. anybody that's keeping score at home, Tom, what's the line so far? Well, the Hillers had four runs in the first, two in the second, five in the third. Ashland 
None in the first, none in the second, one in the third. Emily Whelan in the first, and they get one out. A run is in his score. An 11-2 game as Allison Caveney comes around on the 4-3 sacrifice ground out. Amy Caffarelli up to third. Two outs, one on. Haley Tallman to the plate. And the lefty is going to put this one into center field. That'll get down, a run into score. And it's an RBI single for the shortstop. Emily Whalen, because that runner took a wide turn, was thinking of throwing over to first base. She held on to it. She's a smart player. Certainly is. I'll bring up Nicole Abatine, the center fielder. 11-3, Hillers lead, but Ashland on a little bit of a rally here in this top of the fourth. Up the third base side, and that is a fair ball as Emma Murphy throws from her knees, but it's not in time over to first. And now the runner from second going to advance to third. So Haley Tallman all the way to third on a single by Nicole Abatine. Now bring up Elaine Jones, the third baseman. There's no bullpen activity for the Hillers. Of course, there's no bullpens down here, but they well, warm up I behind us. I think the relief pitcher is already in the game if there was oh, going to be one. Oh, that's true. As this is fouled towards us, count remains, count is 0-1 on Elaine Jones, who has singled and reached on an error. An 11-3 Hillers lead. Ashland has plated two runs in this inning. That one inside, one and one. It is a very warm day. Katie could be uh, succumbing to the heat. But she is in the shade. So I just contradicted myself. That one down low. Throw to first. They nearly picked the runner off. And now the runner from third got to try to score. Cedia is going to be able to make the catch, but the runner does come around and slide safely into home. A good manufactured run there by Ashland as Hallie Tolman is able to slide in. I think that's going to the editing room. I thought I thought she was out. I don't think I, I didn't see any tag well, on we'll, her. we'll just have to agree to disagree right now. <laughs> we'll have to get it into slow mo and see what happens. And eleven of four. Hiller's lead. Line up and the pitch. Swinging strike. Jillian Cedia threw a seed down to Bella Anzi. I thought she had the tag down. Swinging strike, 0 and 2. Or actually, actually, that was uh, strike three. And that'll end the inning, but not before the clockers play three runs. It's an 11 to 4 Hiller's lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the fourth inning, stepping in for the Hillers is Kristen McCluskey. Wind up in the pitch from Sydney McMullen, who remains out there for Ashland, is up high, 1-0. and An 11-4 Hillers lead. Ashland able to play three runs at the top of the inning. I went upstairs and outside, 2-0. There's a good amount of razzle-dazzle running by the Ashland Clockers the last inning. They've got, now got a far spot up on the board. The fourth inning. Two and one. That one outside, three and one. Chris We've got some fans out in the monster seats out there. We do. That's the highest priced ticket in town right there. <laughs> Kristen McCluskey has reached on a single and a walk and scored two runs. And this is up the middle, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. Four to three on the out. And that'll bring up Emily Whalen. The Hiller girls have been taught how to base run. They could teach the boys a thing or two. She ran through first base, chop step, stopped. And she's ready to look around, see for an errant throw. The boys just run down the line. They could run 300 feet. And there's a strike to Whalen. Tell by the tone of my voice that drives me crazy. The infield is in in preparation for just that reason, uh, an attempted bunt there, 0 and 2. With her speed, even if they feel that she's going to beat it out, I think she's the fastest runner in the whole T TVL, if you want my humble opinion. She could very well be. That's foul. 
Cow remains 0-2. She did not bunt, so she stays in the box. Had she bunted that foul, she would have been out. Yep. Gets a piece of this one up the left side. Glove by the third baseman. The throw is going to go off of Whalen. And Emily Whalen thought about running to second after getting hit with the throw. How's your coconut, Emily? That was a nice hit and a good backup by the right fielder. And she is just tough as nails. She was ready to go to second. It didn't even affect her that the throw from third went off of her. She had that ball in her sight the whole time, and she saw that the right fielder was going to pick her off had she decided to go to second. That's what I mean. The girls run bases better than the boys. One on, one out. Alyssa McIntyre at the play. That one up high. One and oh. I think Emily wants to swipe a bag. I'm going into my mind reading mode. And this is up the left side, past the reach of the shortstop, and that is going to be a single for McIntyre. Whalen advances up to second. Wasn't quite a hit and run. It was a run and hit. Two on, one out. Katie Holly to the plate. Holly fouls that one into the backstop. She's a little late on that one. She normally squares them up nice. A big gap in center and right field. The 0 1. And this is up the left side. That's going to be a fair ball. Whalen being waved around third. She's going to come and score. And the ball was bobbled out in left field as well. An RBI single for Katie Holly. Whalen comes around. Alyssa McIntyre up to second. A 12 to 4 Hiller's lead. Now bring up Emma Murphy. And she crushes this one over the left field to the fence. That gets down for a hit. And here comes McIntyre around third. Katie Holly held up at third. And McIntyre easily scores 13 to 4 Hillers. An RBI double for Emma Murphy. That's why she should be playing college ball. I told her last night at the seniors dance. I almost convinced her. Didn't get 100% yes, but at least she should walk on and give it a try. Julian Cedi at the plate, up the third base side, gloved by the third baseman, the throw home, and now they got the runner caught in a pickle, a throw home, and they are gonna get the out. And that was a good defensive play there by Elaine Jones to get Katie Holly trying to score. Julian Cedi reaches on the fielder's choice. Five to two, fielder's choice. Heather Sebo is gonna come in and run for Julian Cedi. Emma Murphy up to third. Heather Sivo in the game as a pinch runner and Bella Ansi to the plate. Two outs in the inning. 13 to four, Hillers lead. That one down low off the catcher. Nice job keeping it in front by Leah Tallman. One zero pitch, fouled away. Bella Ansi had an RBI sacrifice in the first, and is grounded out and lined out today. Runners on the corners, two outs, upstairs. Two and one. Heather Sivo trying to bait the catcher in the throwing behind. Bella gets a piece of this one. That'll get down in the left field. Here comes another Hiller's run. It's 14 to four, Hopkinton. An RBI single for Bella Ansi. That makes up a little bit from that miscue at first base. Emma Murphy comes around to score a run. Another Sevo pinch running for Jillian Cedia up to second. Megan Sullivan to the plate. Up high. The lefties are using that left field line today. Three more runs in this inning for the Hillers as this one is popped up sky high. Second baseman ranges in and makes the catch. It was a little snow cone there, Tom. Yep. 
And she's able to hang on, and that'll retire the side in the bottom of the four. Three runs in for the Hillers. It's 14 to four as we head to the top of the fifth on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the fifth inning, stepping in for Ashland is Justy Benedictus. Katie Holly set the deal, fouled away. 0-1. Oh so far this year, we've really butchered some tough last names, but you, you get an A-plus today on the De Benedictus girls. I paid extra attention to that one, as this is hit in the air, and it is handled by Emma Murphy, one away. That'll bring up Sydney McMullen, the pitcher. A 14 to four lead for the Hillers. Inside. That looked good, that looked good. And if Ashland is unable to score in this inning, and the Hillers can start thinking about scoring a couple for the mercy rule to go into effect. Please explain the mercy rule to me one more time. It's 12 runs up by 12 after five. Okay. But since the Hillers are the home team, the other team would not need to get their at bat. Three and O. Oh. Usually, if they are in the seventh inning, they'll just play the game. They'll finish it. Four pitch walk to McMullen. One on, one out. Leah Tolman, the catcher to the plate. And we might have a pinch hitter here. You are correct, number 13. It's gonna be Gianna Abatine stepping in, the freshman. Pinch hitter for Leah Tallman. Gianna Abatine steps in. A crazy amount of offense in today's game. Hillers have scored in all four innings. Four in the first, two in the second, five in the third, three in the fourth. Ashland scored one in the third, three in the fourth. We just heard for our loudest uh, Ashland Rooter. One on, one out. Gianna Abatine at the plate. There's a strike. I believe she's a relation of the center fielder. And the coach. All in the family. That's right. That one down low, one and one. Hiller outfield playing at medium depth. Up high, two and one. It's Gianna Abatine's 16th at bat. Her uh, 21st plate appearance, rather, of this season. Hitting a 133 to this point. Takes that one inside, three and one. Well, Katie Holly has had to throw a lot of pitches in this game. And there's a five pitch walk, back to back walks. Will they have a pinch runner for Abatine? They'll bring up Allison Cave and he was due up next. So it looks like we might have a pinch hitter. And we got a mound visit. Pinch hitter is going to be Sophia Chrysophytus. Uh, uh, he was all he's going good all game until he Sophia Chrysophytus. pressure was on him. Come on, visit there. What? Who's up? The who's up now? With Katie Holly. As Chrysophytus will step in. Very good. Sophia Chrysophytus, a junior. Little uh, 
manicure of the mound by Katie Hawley. She wants to get a good push off with her cleat. Long discussion uh, between the Ashland coach and the umpire. Katie Holly set to deliver. And that is inside, gets away from Cedia, and both runners will advance. McMullen up to third, and Gianna Abatine up to second. Still only one out in the inning. Ashland threatening once again. I got a good question from one of the peanut gallery earlier in terms of why is the pitcher circle flat as opposed to having a mound? Well, if you watch Katie Holly, she rocks back backwards first and then moves forward. If there was a mound there, she'd fall down. There's a strike one and one. Very true. That one upstairs, two and one. Well, if there was a mound, you'd imagine all the pitches would be too high. That's another good point, Tom. I think uh, Katie Hawley's getting a little tired. I think so. Three and one. Well, Emily Whalen uh, might be the relief if Hopkinton needs any. There's a strike, full count. Coach Soderberg is pacing back and forth like an expectant father. He's not sure when to go out and make a move or if he's gonna make a move. I think it depends on this pitch right here. And that is right to the third baseman, and she'll step on the third base bag. A double play, Emma Murphy. What a defensive play that was. Good awareness. And that is a five unassisted double play to wrap up the top of the fifth to the bottom of the inning we go. The Hillers leading Ashland 14 to four on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the fifth inning, Heather Sivo is going to pinch hit for Jordan Chevery. She's pinch ran three times this game and now is getting in there to take a couple swings. Sydney McMullen on the mound for Ashland. Remains in the game. A 14 to four lead for the Hillers here in the bottom of the fifth. Heather presents a little problem due to she's vertically uh, challenged, we'll say, so her strike zone is very, very small. Though McMullen has to be really on her game. Another Sivo for 10 on the season, takes a strike there. That one high, one and one. Little, just, uh, just a little bit high. But Sivo has shown her speed on the base pass all year. Inside, two and one. Kristen McCluskey do up next. Three and one. Fouled away. Oh, right off the trainer's cart. Oh, that's okay, they got a windshield there. I wonder if they'll uh, need to call their glass insurance on that one. When I'm down the driving range, that little tractor goes by, I'm aiming for that. Almost took out the athletic director. That's all right. <laughs> and that is going to be out number one. I thought that pitch was a little bit high. Not that I'm a homer or anything, I just thought it was a little bit high. Pinch hitter here as well. It's gonna be Maddie Holden stepping in. Up the left side, gloved at short, throw to first, two away. Good stretch by the first baseman. We'll bring up Emily Whalen. A little surprised on the uh, pinch hitters there. You need those two runs for the mercy rule to go into effect. You know, you just want the overtime. <laughs> There's a strike. Bonus for Mercies. Of course, you do have a very comfortable 10 run lead. Infield is in on Whalen. 
Bunt there, bunt attempt there, 0-2. Thought she got a little bit of the bat on the ball, but it doesn't matter. Emily Whalen has scored four runs today. Up the left side, dropped by the third baseman, throw to first, not in time, she's safe. You make any kind of bobble, Emily Whalen, for the most part, is going to beat it out. She's what's known as a speed merchant. And I'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre. I just made that word up. I like it. But it fits, it fits. What are you giving there, the uh, single uh, or the error? What's her batting average? Pretty high. All right, it's an error. <laughs> And this is up the middle, and that is going to go off the glove of the shortstop. A single for Alyssa McIntyre. Emily Whalen up to second. Two on, two outs. Last two plate appearances, she squared it up. Katie Holly at the plate. Katie Holly has walked three times and singled. Two RBIs to her credit, as well as a run. That one down low. I think Alyssa does well when her booby comes down to watch the game. That's fouled away over to the Ashland bench, one and one. And that Coach Soderberg was going to make a kick save down there. He just let the ball go by. The one, one. Outside. Emma Murphy do up next. Well, here's a thought, Tom. If Katie Hawley goes yard here, we go home. That's true. Here's a strike. Mullen deals. Fouled off the backstop. Well, with Waylon and McIntyre possessing good speed, if she hits one to the fence, we could go home. The 2-2, two -two. outside, full count. Yeah, it looks like uh, Mac Mullen has a little hesitation pitch there, fooling the Hopkins and hitters. That one is outside, bases loaded. Two outs in the inning, however. Emma Murphy stepping into the batter's box. She's had quite a day. Four for four, two runs scored. Four RBIs. The outfield has to play sort of medium. They can't play too deep and have a ball drop in front because that would score Alyssa McIntyre. That one down low, 1-0. Oh. They can't play too shallow because if Emma Murphy hits it over their head, that would play McIntyre and Whalen would end the game. And that hitter. Run's going to score. And a run batted in for... How about that? An RBI hit by pitch. We've seen it all this game. She's racking up the uh, RBIs today, the senior, M.M. Murphy. That is five. Now Jillian Seedy is set to step in. And she has to go find her bat. I'm going to put my finger up in the air and see which way the wind blows. 15-4 lead. Inside. Ooh, some chin music there. Julian C has had quite a day as well. Two for four. A couple RBIs and a run. Oh, that hit her, and that is going to drive in another Hiller's run. And the ball game. And that should be it. I believe the mercy rule is going to go into effect right here. And it will. That'll do it. The Hopkinton Hillers grab the 16-4 win over the Ashland Clockers. They do it in five innings. Your player of the game, Emma Murphy, who went four for four, was also hit by a pitch, scored two runs, and had five RBIs to her credit. Katie Holly is the winning pitcher. The losing pitcher is Sydney McMullen. 
And the final score for the final time, the Hopkinton Hillers defeat the Ashland Clockers in five innings total, 16 to four. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers Ashland Clockers softball on either HCAM in Hopkinton or WACA TV in Ashland. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and we'll talk to you again soon.